Okay, it looks, and I'm gonna hit record. Okay, here we go. Hello, everybody. Welcome, welcome. Um, I am so excited to be here and introduce this gentleman to you. Um, he's been a, a person from, for me, he's just, he's the man. He has done everything right. I mean, he um, inspires me. He, he pushes me. He gets in my face when he needs to, you know, and, and not only is this man a mentor to me, he is a dear, dear friend to my husband and myself, Freddie, and his family is absolutely beautiful. I love Terry. You know what? She could be a mentor in her own right too, but yeah. what <laughs> this is for now the interview okay that's okay. the name of this every tuesday i will be here i'm coming to you from my home in hayward wisconsin beautiful quaint little town and i was just telling robert i've got heavenly scents coming out of my crock pot venison stew who doesn't love that right but i am so honored and proud to have you here with me today robert and and to talk um not about business, no. but just just being the friend that you are and a person that is making huge impact in our world today. And and that is you. And so everybody, please welcome Robert Hollis. Well, thank you, Lisa Marie. And and you're absolutely correct. I, I love you and Freddie. And um, you know, I I just love people and when people want to figure out how to be, have a better life. I, the things that I've figured out on my own uh, through my mentors, I just pass that stuff on. And so, you know, to think that I grew up in a little town of Williston, North Dakota, and um, <clears throat> it was like mandatory that we all filled our, um, our buck and our dough license every year, because that's what fed the family. That, right. That's what fed the family. So I, I learned to shoot a gun really early in life, because if you don't know how to shoot, then uh, kids are just a, a, a smarter animal that could still kick brush and still run. <laughs> so you had all the kids that would be going through the brush. So when the deer popped up, it was pretty funny. So, um, but yeah, it's such a blessing. You are such an incredible person and I'm just glad to be on here. So what kind of questions do you have? Well, I've got a lot of questions and I'm going to save my big one for last because, um, and it, knowing you, you might get into that, but let's just see what happens. But, sure. um, okay. Uh, let's start with what drives you to continue making an impact and how has that passion evolved over the years? So basically I kind of want to know, um, I don't know if a lot of you know, but Robert is a major contributor to orphans all around the world. I mean, and I find that just amazing. I mean, but at what point in your career did it did it come about more than you? You, you know, it it, it it came really early in my career because uh you know, I, I'm one of those people that are extremely, extremely driven. And when I was young, I'm super, super competitive. So, you know, I, I not only race cars, but I was in rodeo. I was in sports. I was, you know, there wasn't anything that I did that wasn't competitive, you know. So I was on multiple bowling leagues and pole leagues and dart leagues, you know, anything that you can have in a little small area. I, I have always been that kind of competitive. And so when I moved to California just to get involved with bigger race car uh, people and stuff like that, and then I got hurt and put into this uh, this industry, it didn't take me long uh, to hit the top position. And and numbers for me, it was just like Lisa Maria, it's just like laps on, on a racetrack, right? So if you get in a race and it's a 30 lap race, you got 30 laps to get to the lead. It's not the first lap. You know, you just got to keep consistent and keep getting better and better. So when I got into this industry and I knew that a majority of the people didn't want to change their lives, but 
if I talked to a lot of people, they knew people that would want to change their lives. So it didn't mm -hmm. take me long to get to, uh, you know, the, the top position of my first company that was back in 87 and 88. And all of a sudden, when I got there, I immediately was like, now what? You know, <laughs> now Sorry, what? I get distracted for just a second there. Right, exactly. Yeah. Now what? And so now I'm a national marketing director. This is the top spot. And um, now what? Now what? There wasn't another position or anything. And my mentor shared with me and he says, Robert, the goal, and you know, this is like the old Zig Ziglar uh, deal is he said, Robert, the people that make the biggest impact and biggest difference is how many people can you get there? Now that you're an, a, a, an international marketing director or national marketing director, you know, now start helping other people do that. And so that became something that I loved more than me making money. Well, it didn't take long for me to find out if I had a number of people that were super affiliates um, that my income was going up. So then I got this thing in my head where, you know, if there's 10 people on stage that are getting an award, I just wanted nine of them to be in my group. And so that was the next thing I fulfilled. And then all of a sudden it was like, okay, so now what? And I really didn't think outside the box like that until I met Angel and Matthew. So, you know, really? it, it was, so here That's I am cranking, I'm doing well. And then uh, Richard Ferris, I think, not think I know, introduced me to this couple. And they were saying like, listen, you know, we want to build schools and, and stuff for, you know, people that don't have parents, orphans and, 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 and children. And we, you know, we would like your help. Well, I, I didn't know that they knew my story. So sitting across at dinner with these people and them saying that they wanted to take care of kids that got taken away from their parents or lost their parents. I mean, I fell in love with them. And can you believe that was 10 years ago? That was so, it. Yeah, I'm going to try to do a podcast with them tomorrow. So, you know, but oh, then all of a sudden they were trying to tell, they were trying to tell me, you know, how little it took to build a school in India and in Jamaica. Yeah. And I was going like, what? You know, it was just like, oh, well, we could actually have 200 kids and build a school and we could do that for like $5,000, $8,000. And I was going like, done. <laughs> no kidding. Uh, no kidding. I guess I didn't realize that either. Yeah, it's, in other countries... Happy. Yeah, in other countries, the, the cost of construction and everything like that, because people get paid so little, you know, a lot of people don't realize that most countries in the world, uh, a person makes less than $5 a day, right. working yeah. all day. It's like, so when you sit there and you think about that, so when I started giving them money and I could see what they were doing with the money and how many children they were helping, and the more I gave them, the more children they were helping, I was going like, I, I there's no better feeling in the world that that yeah, gives me more joy sure. than than sending them money. So that's so now I got addicted to that. And other children that I dealt with is the St. Jude Children's Hospital. I you know when I found a charity that gave almost all the money to to the children. And then the other one was the Starkey Hearing Foundation. So when I when I heard this billionaire you know was basically flying all over the world fitting children with hearing aids that have never heard the words, I love you. You know, they've never heard laughter. It was like, ah, his name is Bill Austin. And so he really challenged me. He's going, Robert, he says, you, you, you've given away millions, but come on. You know well, what I mean? Have you, seen, but, have you seen those commercials where they just put something on those little kids' ears and, and the look on their faces? Uh, like, oh my goodness. So I it, can- I don't, I don't know that. people that- People, people that watch that, I that would really, really that be should be a sorting tool. It should be watch this happen and let did it did you feel anything? Yes, I did. Okay, you're you can work with me. It was like because if you can watch that video and not feel anything, <laughs> exactly. exactly. You know that brings up a good point. That's something I wanted to touch on with you a little bit. It was um, that feeling. Okay, so. I was never one with personal development and I'm sure this can help a lot of people because I'm sure I'm like a lot of people out there and 
you grow up and you don't even, you don't, it's not a normal thing. No. So, you know, you're talking about all these things, it just, nothing clicks. Right. So when I first joined network marketing, that is when I was first introduced to it. It still meant nothing. I felt nothing. Right. Until I started following you. Oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's, I, I think a lot of people um, understand. I mean, I watched a recent interview with uh, Joe Rogan and Mike Tyson. And, and one of the things that they, that Mike Tyson said is Jim Rowan, uh, uh, Joe Rogan said, you know, um, what do you think most people that are in the sports game today don't understand? And he said that it's 90% mental. It's 90% psychology. He goes, the only reason I was good as I was is that my mentor, my coach made me understand that I had to see the completion of the fight in my brain enough to be emotionally attached to, emotionally being attached with my heart. And he says, there's nobody, including Muhammad Ali, that says I love to work out that nobody loves to work out. No one wants to do the work. And he says, but if you fall in love with the vision of what you're going to accomplish, he told me I was going to be the youngest what, youngest uh, heavyweight in the world and what that would do for me. And he said, so I all of a sudden took all the things that I hated to do, do every day. And, and I fell in love with the things that most people don't because I, it was a mind game for me. Once I got the mind right, then I got the passion and in the heart. And that's what made me work out crazy like I did. Yeah. And so people think it's the other way around. So what happens if you don't have personal development or understand that you have to create a vision that you fall in love with, now it is work for you. See, right. no one likes the work and this is hard. And I don't like doing this. And if you don't like doing this and it doesn't make you feel good, then you don't do it. Right. right. And so every day people go, I know I, I know I need to connect with people that want a better lifestyle, but I'm I, I just not going to do it. It's it. So to me, that means that you just haven't created a vision that you have fallen in love with yet. That's right. That's what I was going to say, because I've never had a per se vision that's why everybody calls you the visionary yeah wow, thank you yeah i mean that's what you instill in people i just to get them to dream and to believe that they are a miracle so yeah i think that is so cool with you oh, and thank you. Thank it, you. it well, is i mean that, people that you personally know like melody and and uh, wanda k i thought of her today so i reached out to her immediately because oh, i nice. mentioned her and the z-man uh, you know, on, on my uh, uh, YouTube live today. And, and it's like, uh, you know, there's people like that where Wanda all of a sudden just started doing the stuff that she needed to do. And then all of a sudden, all these churches started reaching out to her saying, listen, can you do this for us? And it was like, that's what she loves to do. And now she's making money doing that. And, and uh, it's like, it's, it's, again, when you're, when you fall in love with what you do, you'll never work another day of your life. And, and you know, I think that's where people kind of get, um, listen to me, the professional, right? No, I have, <laughs> so much, I have learned so much from you. But you, so. but you are, Lisa, <laughs> the stuff that you know in your mind and your heart puts you in the top 3% of all people that have ever existed on this planet. Because <laughs> other people... Other people are just not aware of it and other people don't think about it. And, and so they don't do anything. So and that, that's exactly it. We're not aware. We're not yeah. aware. Once you become aware, it's like you go through a period where you are totally just beating yourself up. You, yeah. you know what I mean? But I, I think when you get past that, it's like I am feeling that swelled heart all the time. That yeah. just that good, good feeling. And and that's kind of what this is about. I want to leave people that watch this that kind of feeling. 
And, yeah, and, and, it, and it's like every one of us, I, the way that I always say it is people don't want to admit to this because we get sort of programmed that we're not supposed to have feelings. Right. You know, you're not, it's like if you have feelings that makes you out of control, that makes you weak. I grew up like you, Lisa Marie, in a, in a, around a group of people that if you're crying, you know, stop crying or I'll give you something to cry about. You know what I mean? So, so you know, we people that 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 cried or had emotions, um, you know, they were made fun of. And so, you know, so you know, even if you're running, you know, on a softball field and you lose your balance and you wipe out and you, you know, got road rash or I guess it would be called a, a field rash all over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, you're just supposed to suck it up. You're supposed to be right. strong. And, and uh, so when all of a sudden you, you know, you're around situations where you see a commercial or maybe you're at church and you hear someone sing, you know, that, that was always been the one for me is when I would hear an individual sing and then you would hear another individual sing and it like immediately starts choking you up. You know what I mean? And, and it's because they're, they're singing from a place that is heartfelt. And when they do that, it touches your heart. And then you're going like, hang on, I, 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 I don't, I'm not interested in feeling this feeling right now. And even guys, you know, strong ass guys, you know what I mean? We'll watch, um, like recently, I just watched a, um, um, a, a boxing match. It was an MMA fight. And this kid has been doing this since he was 16 years old. And, and so now he's like 26, 27. And he won the fight and he became the champion. And so as soon as he knocked the guy out, he fell to his knees and you could see his whole body convulsing because he was crying so hard. So now he's in the middle of a ring. There's 70,000 people in the audience. There's millions oh of people goodness. watching all over the world. And he finally pulled off the vision that he had. So that's when the emotions took him over. And now he's got to do an interview. <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> and so they, you know, they do this all the time, Lisa Marie. We watch people where they walk up and go, wow, you you're the new world champion. How do you feel? And it's like, what are you trying? It's like you're crying your emotions. And so even, I'm saying this funny, but even a grown ass man, if, 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 if he sees something like that, he, he'll look around to make sure that, you know, no one's seeing him while, <laughs> right. while, while he's getting caught up in the emotions, you know what I mean? And uh, that, that one kid that just won that Spaniard that just won the Wimbledon, you know, he beat, beat the guy that he says, these guys, I have their posters on my wall. And he goes in there and beats a guy that has won it 10 times. And he, he beats the guy that was his, and so, he was a little emotional. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Who wouldn't be? Oh yeah. my gosh. I'd be a blubbering mess for sure. Oh, totally. Totally. <laughs> so totally. I th do you think that you actually have to, um, in order for somebody to be aware and to understand what is needed. And I, I absolutely believe that personal development is, is at the top of the list. No doubt. No doubt. Okay. And, and even, even in scripture, it talks about, you know, it says that, you know, you're turning a new leaf, you're, you're renewing your mind, you become a new person. Well, for those of you that believe in that, and if you, you know, did do the Lord's prayer or become baptized and you say, now I'm, I'm a new person. And I think the most of the people that know you and go, no, you're a Christian now, but you're the same damn person. <laughs> Right, right, it, absolutely. And you know, I I deal with a lot of that right now. Yeah. Um, my inner circle or my the people closest to me because I was not always a a nice person. Right. <laughs> I was not always. Right. Do you and, know what I mean? When people I, say, yeah, when people, Lisa, when people say, Lisa, you've changed. The the response behind that is, thank you. I've been working very hard at it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah. High five. You bet. <laughs> I love that. That's awesome. That's a good one. I'm yeah. going to use that because, you know, pe people try to change. They, they yeah. do. And, and that peer pressure, just like 
Oh. You are when you're in school, you get that same thing as an adult. Yes, is, you do. Is, is yeah, you're still bad. you're still trying to fit into the cliques and you're still right. trying to so yeah. as soon as we we venture off to try to renew our mind. Uh, like I even say, if you think about it, it's also in every movie that deals with what we call the hero's journey. It's, uh, uh, you know, Jonathan Livingston Seiko or the Field of Dreams, you know, all these movies, Star Wars have all these things in common. One is the person says, is this all there is? Real? I mean, God, it, there's just got to be more meaning to life than this. You know, yeah. I, I, I'm just going to work, getting paid peanuts, just getting by. Uh, I, I don't even have enough money in the bank to take a nice vacation anywhere. Well, then if you ever told your inner circle that you grew up around that you were thinking about you and Freddie going to Italy or going to Greece or going to Spain or going to Hong Kong, they would go, what the hell is wrong with you? You, you don't travel outside of this city. You'd have some country. <laughs> you would have friends that would say, hey, we're thinking about going to L.A. or we're going to go to Florida. And they're going, why would you go to that rat race? See what I mean? Their minds have already taken all their options away from them. Yeah. Or make them <laughs> such a guess for their decision, you know? <laughs> so what, what more do I have to become than just to get up every day, go to my job? pay my bills on time and do my best not to get arrested. It, it just, you know, it's like, you know, then I get to raise kids, you know, raising kids is easy. It, it, it's like, you just got to put up with them until they turn 18 so they can get the hell out of the house. You know what I mean? It's, <laughs> it's like this whole different thing. And then when the kids leave, I, I hope I still have something in my relationship with my spouse where they stick around. <laughs> thanks, thanks. Is it? Yeah, we, you know, <laughs> we can't wait for him to walk and talk, and then we can't wait. You get to tell him to be quiet and sit down. You know what I mean? Yeah. We were just and so, so mm -hmm. once a person says there's got to be more than this, then that's when they put themselves in a situation where they become seekers. See, they don't really realize that they brought the change to them, but mm -hmm. all of a sudden they start looking around. And it's like, well, maybe I can make money online or maybe I could do this. And then all of a sudden you catch people that are. And now all of a sudden you get to see that there's a whole different world that, you right. know, people, people make more in a second than most people make in their lives. Right. And then right away we start beating ourselves up again. I'm not smart enough. I didn't go to college. I, you know, I can't spell very well. So then we start beating ourselves up that we always believe that someone that makes more money than us has more talent, more skills, that they're smarter than us. And that's untrue. <laughs> but it, and not to, but look at you, look at your, you're dyslexic. You were labeled as a child. You had that label put to you and that carried you through, you know, and yeah. it's like, and look at you now. I mean, so that means nothing. Absolutely. I'm far from done too, you right. know, like, yeah. So, yeah. so all of a sudden you tap into this stuff, you know, which is really just thinking of yourself different than somebody else. And then all of a sudden you start finding, wow, I'm, I'm grateful for everything. And I appreciate everything. And all, all of a sudden these things start happening where you start creating that elusive thing of, uh, you know, I'm happy. And, and, and when, when you get addicted to that, it's like, why can't I be happier? Why can't I be happy all the time? And then immediately think what happens. Now, all of a sudden, the people that you're around, you know, start going, listen, no one's happy all the time. Uh, yeah, they are. <laughs> yeah, they are. Yeah, but, you know, money doesn't buy happiness. Uh, yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah I mean, well it certainly gives you options doesn't it it gives you options and gives you choices so yeah you know when when I consistently give money uh to orphans uh no one can take that feeling away from me that's and, right and and, and uh yeah. you know when I keep getting testimonials too you know there's people all over the world that I help and when they send me messages like I just had a guy that 
I met online and he's going, you know, he just sent me a message. He said, at the beginning of this month, I was really scared about doing what you told me to do, but I can't believe I've made $500 in the last two weeks. Nice. You know, and it's like, nice. you know, uh, everyone says money doesn't buy happiness, but there's not a person that watches this video live or recorded that if I told you, listen, create a pen pa a PayPal or a Venmo account, and I'll send you $500. And if you send it to me and I sent you $500, none of you can tell me that that wouldn't put a smile on your face. That's right. <laughs> Could you because right? you would immediately know what you would do with it if it had to pay a bill or, you know, you bought something for someone else or you took your family out to eat. It's like, come on, you know, we, we minimize what it's like to be able to have money to do things for others. Absolutely, absolutely. We, we only think about greedy people because that's, that's what the programming does. The script, does. Think, think about it, from the day that we were little kids, it was the average people and then the Scrooge. Yeah, yeah, you're right. The Jetsons, the Jetsons. You know, yeah. right? You yeah. have the happy family and then you got the boss. The guy that runs the company is an asshole. And he, he's greedy and he's smoking cigars with his feet up on his desk and he's mean to people. That's that's what money is programmed to us, you know, Wall Street. It you know, is. is good. You know yeah, what I mean? I think back listening to my folks, <laughs> you know, when I was little, listening to everything that they told me. Right. And, and I heard it all, money don't grow on trees and this and that. And Wow. It's crazy. Wow. And, and guess who they always, for the little town people, the rural people like us, Lisa Marie, guess who the bad person was in town? It, 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 it was the banker. Right. right. See, the right. banker is the bad and evil guy that's got all the money in the vault and he won't give it to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it, everything that you talk about, whether it's in our inner circle, which I want you to talk about because that is amazing. And I want you to talk about the house organization or the, yeah, the, I want you to talk about that. Um, but, oh, shoot, I just got off topic and I lost that. So I do want you to talk about those, but in sure. that other question, it'll pop into my head. So, um, so let yeah, first of all, tell us about the inner circle because that is really kind of helping the um, Hollis organization, right? Well, I, I'm first of all, I'm so proud of you, Lisa Marie, being a part of it. Um, you know, the inner circle was really came about years and years ago because I was in the inner circle with my mentor. So it all of a sudden became this point where, well, if I went from doing this with my life and impacting this much people, then what do I do to get to the next level? And so, you know, it doesn't make a difference how much impact and how much money you make. There's still another level to acquire. And it's not because, you know, that, that's why people don't understand that statement. It's like, why did you climb Mount Everest? Because it was there. See, you know, I still see people that do stuff that I would never do. You know, it's like, hey, every year, you know, you got a couple of people that swim from California to Catalina Island. You know, I don't see the need to swim 23 miles. You know what I mean? It's like, there's just some people that do some crazy stuff. And you go, why do you do it? But their idea is because I, I can, you know, mm -hmm. I, I, I want to do that. So when I got into the inner circle, I started learning other things that I could do to get breakthroughs from breaking paradigms and programming that I had before that there was these little things that kept coming up that were self-sabotaging to myself. And so when I watched my mentor take, you know, seven people was the nights of his round table and he turned us all into multimillionaires, you know? And so, you know, it's crazy that, you know, the people that are looking for a higher level, there's people out there that have that. And so when I seen that, and of course, when I left him, it just became a common thing that there was a group of people that really wanted to know the inside stuff, right. which, which a lot of people don't like to hear because if you get in the inner circle, the things that you're dealing with is not really the outside stuff, it's the inside stuff. Right. You know what I mean? And, and so some of those inside things are not difficult to handle. So, you know, when we started the inner circle, 
here, and I've done it with other companies too, the inner mm -hmm. circle here was just for me to spend personal time with people. A lot of people would rather be voyeurs, which is okay. They'll they'll watch videos of me doing breakthroughs, you know, and they won't be live, you know, so they'll just watch them record it. And that's fine. That's where I used to be. I used to be the guy that always sat in the corner, never wanted to raise my hand, just wanted to learn and listen. And then there's a group of people in there that want to be there live and they'll even turn their camera on, but they're still not ready to go through a breakthrough. So then the last group is the brave people like you, Lisa Marie, that just throws themselves in the fire and, and, and goes, hey, listen, I'm tired of dealing with this garbage and tell me what's wrong here. Tell me why I'm doing this. And I, I'm sick and tired of continue doing this loop over and over and over again. And all it is, is that people understand that in our mind, you know, it, it's, it is programmed. That's why they call it programming. And so you're always going to act the same way because you always do the same thing over and over again. Right. So if you don't, if you don't create what we call in our mind is where you're breaking the pattern is what you're doing. And then all of a sudden, when that thing comes up, you go, ah, uh -uh, wait a minute. Now, the first time you're aware of it, you still do the habit anyway. So that's where the self beating yourself up is. See, because now you, before you wasn't aware you were doing anything wrong. Now all of a right. sudden you become aware that you're doing things wrong. And then you do it anyway, even though you're aware of it. And now you're really pissed off at yourself. <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. <laughs> yeah. And then the next time is when you do it enough and you're aware enough that when it comes up, you, you break the pattern and you do something different. And now you're like, feel like you're patting yourself on the back every day because you remember all this awful programming that you had where you did the same thing over and over and including a response. I always tell people, if you're a kind of person that when someone gives you a compliment and you can't smile and just say, thank you, I really appreciate you saying that, you got some shitty programming, man. Yeah. You really do when someone says, oh my God, Lisa Marie, you look beautiful today. Um, what do you want? <laughs> yeah. Your really. first response is, what do you want? What, what do you mean? I don't want That's anything. That's exactly no, how no. I was. Now, yeah. no one does a compliment like that without, do you need me to make you some cookies? Do you need a ride to the airport? See, there, our mind doesn't even know how to receive a sincere compliment because we don't believe it in ourselves. Right. That's so right. even if someone says, wow, Lisa Marie, you're such a wonderful person. Not really. <laughs> 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 if you see me when I'm not around you, you know, it, it's, right. I know, we all do that. We we all yeah. do that. For sure. But yeah, if once you are aware, then you can't change nothing if you're not aware of it. Right. And so the that, biggest thing I love, the biggest thing I love about inner circle is not only working with people like you, Lisa Marie, but but also having people watch other people go through breakthroughs because yeah, that's so huge. many people that that when you make that leap of faith like that, I know Lisa Marie, the biggest rewards that you've gotten from being in the inner circle is when you did jump into the fire and you allowed me to be who I am with you. Then the number of people that reached out to you afterwards going, thank you, thank you, right. thank you, thank you, thank you. Because they're, they're, they're scared to jump in there. Some people don't want to yeah. know what's what's stuck in there. <laughs> you want to know what what broke, what got me over? Do I? I mean, to actually get on there live because I watched you for a long time before I did that too. It was Melody Riva. She had wow. said something to me um, once. It was a long time ago, but it was when you started the AMAs again. Yep. And. Um, and I don't know if she told me or Nicholas or the group of us, whatever. She says, you know what? Anytime you have a chance to be in front of Robert and he's seeing your name and he's hearing your voice, you want to be there. Yeah. I don't care how uncomfortable it is. You want to be seen. So, and that's always stuck in my mind this whole time. And that is what pushed me i think too that is melody is is uh she's wonderful 
the number, yeah. the numbers, the, the amount of stuff that that woman's walked through and it's yeah. still walking. Right? Through. It's just, yeah. I man, know. And she, so and, and, and she was a big reason why I always asked you, you know, um, that chapter in the science of getting rich, you know, with the illnesses and it just, it, it just bothered me so much. Right. You know, that somebody like that ends up dealing with stuff like that. Yeah. And, and uh, uh, that I would say the best example of that is there's not a place that you can read in any religious stuff where uh, there's not a number of scriptures that just says you'll never know. You'll never understand the breadth, the width, and the depth. Mm -hmm. of, of, you know, so that's why people say it's a mystery. And Jim Rowan said, if I were you, I wouldn't take that class. And so, you know, dealing with infants, right, and dealing with children like I do, when you see a child that's born that has, you know, something wrong with it, and, and then you find out young children that don't even understand uh, a language yet that catch cancer, mm -hmm. there, there's all this stuff where you're just going like, right. I, I, I don't understand. And um, I don't think that we will. I don't think that we will in this life. So when people try to understand why other people have that happen to them, you know what I mean? Because it just doesn't make any sense. I just say it's just meant not to make any sense. It's like right. human beings get frustrated and overwhelmed and angry because they want things to be fair. And, and they're just not. You know, so I'm sure a lot of people seen me when I was young and just went, that that's wrong. So, you know, they're looking at this family and they're all native Indians, and you got this one white kid standing with all the native Indians. Right? right. At a rodeo, that's all native Indians. Mm -hmm. So whenever someone sees an entire white family and then they see an African American or an Asian or a Latino you know, at standing with a total white per family, I go, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> mm, right. that person right, right. looked a little out of place. That was me. You know what I mean? So it, it was like, uh, people just look at it and go, I, you know, right away, they feel sorry for me when they don't realize that I'm with a loving family and I didn't used to be. Right. That I'm not being abused, but I used to be. Right. See, all they don't look at that kid going, wow, that family took that kid in. It's not their nationality. It's not their 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 culture or anything. But someone decided mm -hmm. to love that child. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, no, we go, hey, you know, so you got all these people going, you know, how is that? How is that white kid going to learn about his nationality from a native Indian family? And it was like. I, I, I'm, I'm okay. <laughs> I turned out all right. Well, th this is going so fast. It's like, I, I don't want you, I, I want you to stay right here, but, <laughs> but I, and I know you've got other things, but there's two more questions. That no, I, really I, 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 I gave myself plenty of time to be on here. Okay. You're worth it, Lisa. All right. Um, so I know, I think I know, I do know the answer to this, but maybe our viewers don't. Okay. Um, we, we give that gift, the book, the science of getting rich to everybody that we meet, to anybody that will take it. Right. Right. Um, how much do you believe that that book, learning the principles of that book is key to, first of all, changing your whole life, but right. being able to let the other shit go and yeah. be successful a hundred percent it it i i this book this book turned me into loving myself okay yeah okay so yeah. so if you really think of all the principles that in philosophy that the science of getting rich teaches you it teaches you all outside stuff all right so you got to have gratitude. You got to believe if other people did it, you can do it. You got to believe that, you know, success is not monopolized. You know, a lot of us grew up with programming that, you know, the, the wealth, wealth and power is only for those that were chosen. And, and you got to understand that that programming came all the way back from having a king and queen 
that right. people still make a big deal out of. That's crazy to me. Hey, did you see we have a new king? And it's like, what? You know, I live in America, you know? Oh, we, you know. So, so this whole concept of the blue bloods, the the wealthy, the people, you know, so I'm just a peasant. We're just a peasant where you don't get to enjoy that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. See what I mean? So the science of getting rich opens up the thoughts and the possibilities that all that stuff is bullshit. All right. right? Now that's all outside stuff. But if you don't believe in yourself and you don't love yourself, this is the other part of the puzzle. Now mm -hmm. I tell people there's two funny things. You can love and believe in yourself. And we've met people like this. These are people that I feel like, you know, we meet nurses, we meet people that love nature. They're, they're, you know, we've always considered them in our age, you know, like hippies, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and uh, see, they totally love who they are. And they're so in love with who they are and they're in love with nature that they love and care for everyone. Right. See, they're missing the science of getting rich. They got, right. they got this down. <laughs> right, right. So let's go the other way. So now we hear all this programming about people that are mean and evil and they have money and their power and they treat people bad. Uh, they figured out the science of getting rich, but they don't have this. Right. <laughs> so that's when we hear, well, money changes who you are. It does. It makes you more of who you are. It's just a magnifier. So if you're a kind of person that whenever you have a little bit of money, you're taking everybody out to eat, you're, you're buying them presents, you're doing nice things with your money, you're giving more money at church if you go to church. If you're that kind of person, you're just going to be more of that person with more money. Right. I agree. Yeah, for sure. And so, and I don't for think sure. I've ever said that on any interview. You know what I mean? So you got the inside work and then you got the outside work. I don't, not that I have not heard you say that before. Yeah, and and pulled, I follow you pretty close. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you pulled that out of me. You pulled that out. <laughs> of me. So, you know, it's like the Hollis organization is the science of getting rich for me and my family. The Hollis Foundation is the heart yeah you know so oh, that, that makes so much sense yeah that so that you, is so you always see people that have a lot of money and maybe they've won a grammy or an oscar um they're they got money out of the way and then all of a sudden these are the people that you hear that are big public people that mm -hmm. all of a sudden we hear Oh my God, now the guy does nothing but just travel to countries and make sure that every child has clean water. See, because oh, they focus on the science of getting rich and now they have the accolades, they have the money, they're the movie star, they're the A-lister, they're, they're in that realm, but there's still something missing. So that's usually when you hear about, wow, you know, didn't, um, wasn't Matt Damon or are DiCaprio the what what aren't they just like A-list movie stars and then you hear you know Brad Pitt he's building houses down in you know New Orleans it, you, you start to see where people start going no listen I I these accolades are not doing it for me I got to find a way to give this back to others right right service to many right the way to greatness is a service to many as you always yes. say yep, I love that absolutely. Yeah, that made that just really gave me an aha moment right there. Good. So thank you Good. for that. So yeah, because the things that you want to do to help other people, see, it's like, and again, I believe that a lot of people just have them reversed. See what I mean? Right. They they focus, they don't think think the time to think about how they can help others. And right. so then they they don't. So it's like. I'll walk up to people and go, hey, listen, you know, I can show you how to be financially set and free. And they're like, no, thank you. See, because they, they really don't have any other place for the money to go. Right. And so believe it or not, money. people won't like what I say right here, but most people are making what they're making because that's their decision. Mm -hmm. See, they don't want to, they, 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 they're mad because the company they're working for is not paying them right or not treating them right. 
they don't believe enough in their selves to believe that they're a miracle and they could get a better job or be an entrepreneur. But so in their mind, they go, you know, to be honest with you, I'm grateful for what I have and we're paying our bills. I got a roof over my house. Um, you know, I'm not too much in debt. See what I mean? So, so everything's okay for them. You know it's, what? That used to be okay for me too. Yeah. But it's mostly. not anymore. Right. I, I definitely want more. Yeah. So know? then all of a sudden when you say, well, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to create a place where children and people can just come. Like I, there's, there's was, a, I just seen a commercial just the other day about an Airbnb and what a great idea, but it just showed these kids and the mom and dad playing with this little mini horse and this little mini donkey. Mm -hmm. And, and you're, they were showing it going, taking it all over. And it was playing that song. Uh, I'm going to ride my horse all day, you know, and, and, and you just seen them having fun on this like little ranch, you know what I mean? Uh, you know, log house, you know, and everything. And then I found out it was an Airbnb and I was going like, that is freaking brilliant because you no got all, the <laughs> you no got all these people that would be, oh, it'd be fun to be around animals and, and help animals and learn how to do this. So as soon as I shared that with my wife, she was going, man, they just did that on one of the house, housewives, you know? So, you know, the people at Housewives of Beverly Hills or whatever in New York. I, I absolutely they, love that. I yeah, they, they all went to some place in Montana and, mm -hmm. and, and did what, you know, do, do what ranchers and farmers do. You know, it's like mm -hmm. everybody's like, bang, I wouldn't want to do this all day. But people that love doing it, love doing it. it right. It's part of their chores, you know? Actually, you know what? We have the capabilities to do that would fit right in with Buddy's place. And the, the yes. orphan, wouldn't that? Oh my it goodness. It totally would. Like, phew. Wow. So we, got the, so we got the therapeutic side of it, right? right. But, but there's a lot of people that would like to, um, and, and that's one of the things that I've always loved about the Asian culture. The Asian culture just really, really thinks like, there's more people from Asia that visit the Yellowstone National Park every year than people that live in the United States. Seriously? Yeah. Interesting. It's like, yeah. oh my God, that's a, who wouldn't want to go there and see this incredible park and Old Faithful and the waterfalls and, and the land, right. the animals, they don't have them there. <laughs> right. right. What what part of Hawaii would attract Asians? Because um, oh. All of it, the whole, the whole thing. Yeah, it's gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah, it, it, but that's know, what we experienced going there was, yeah, yeah, it was all Asians. I don't know, but yeah. very interesting. I yeah, am well, so they, glad they, that you yeah. talked about that. Well, talk about programming, right? If right. from the time that you can remember being a small child, that your parents worked and then they got a holiday. They worked and got a holiday. See, Europeans are the same way. Yeah. It's like to think that Europeans and Asians, they're told they're taking two months off. Not a week, mm -hmm. not two weeks. You don't get to go to work on holiday. Oh, well, what am I going to do? Go some damn place. <laughs> mm -hmm. right. yeah. So imagine from the time that you're a little kid, that you know that you're working, you know, 10 months and that you're taking two months off. And so your whole life, your grandparents, your parents, it's like, where are we going? Are we going to Italy? Are we going to Greece? Are we going to Spain? Are we going to Peru? Are we going to Hawaii? Are we going to New York? See, that's in their itinerary. And think about it. It's every year. Right. Every yeah. year, these families are getting together and they're going someplace. Mm -hmm. I suppose it's no different than when I used to teach school, have the yeah. summer, you know? It's like That's me, crazy. you know, me, it's like we got to go to another city and work in, in the rodeo. Mm -hmm. Right. <laughs> or you yeah. were part of the carnival, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's like anyway, that. I don't know where that came from, but anyway, there's one more question I want to sure, ask sure. you. And and you have achieved so, so much, 
you have accurate. I could have spent an hour on your accolades. Thank you. But Thanks. It, it, but that's not what you're about. I mean, no. you have touched every area of my life. Oh. And I think people need that, that all over balance. And that's what you gave to me. You know awesome. what I mean? You, well, you, yeah. see, you see you and Freddie. Yeah, it just, it just, it just makes me smile. It just, yeah, it just I it know. Helps. You make us smile too. <laughs> <laughs> you do. I love you. And I can't wait to have you over first too. So yes, you guys absolutely. come here next time. We won't meet in Nashville. You come here. Yes. Anyway, okay. One last question because I feel like you have reached the ultimate for in many, many people's eyes. I mean, you've got it all. You you love and adore your family. I yes. see that. They see that. I mean, and I just love your heart. You are so giving and so kind and compassionate. And anybody would be blessed to work with you. And, and you do that for a huge community. Whether they are in your company or not, you are teaching everybody at the kindness of your heart. I mean, and, and you take everybody in. Oh. You do. I, well, that I, is just, I, I find because... that amazing. Yeah, uh, well, what I'm really doing, Lisa Marie, is creating what I didn't have when I was young. Right, right. So I always wanted, I always wanted a family, a group of people that unconditionally just loved me and encouraged me for the person that I was. Right. End of story. I, I, you know, it's not, you know, that you're not doing this or you're not doing this and why you're not doing this and you why you're not doing this. You know, it, it's just constant thing that people don't even know how to show sincere appreciation and love for one another. They, oh, they don't, you know, yeah. That reminded me of that question. What is your go-to chapter in the science of getting rich? Because we oh. talked about four, 14 and seven. Is it seven? It's definitely seven. It, it's <laughs> definitely seven. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's gratitude all day long. I still to this day, as hard as I work on myself, I still find myself slipping. You know what I mean? It's like, it's just like, a, a, um, and it's so funny because that's why I did that video uh, yesterday about, uh, you know, destroying your life, destroying your dreams. Because a lot of times what we don't realize happen is when we try to share our dreams and our vision with other people, they're not so understanding. And so, you know, like I just see people, they get all excited about how they can change somebody's life. And then they introduce people to that that are not ready. Right. And then they crap all over it. So mm -hmm. you bring in a whole group of people like that's happening in Nigeria right now. And because they're bringing so many people to it, they're finding a large group of people that find something wrong with everything. Yeah. Okay. And so this sometimes like cancer, you know, has a tendency of spilling into the people that are believers. Because they 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 didn't realize they're you know they're that's what they talk about is you know Lisa Marie why don't you take off the rose colored glasses you know mm -hmm. you're looking at this person or and that's why people get weird you know it's like I've had people go my God when I started started telling everybody the stuff that you helped me with they immediately started trashing you you know listen you can't stop talking about robert you can't stop talking about you know this miracle world and you can't stop talking about the science of getting rich and so what they do is they start trashing like one i had one person i'll tell you this story i had one person that reached out to me and they said well i talked to a friend of mine and he did some research on wallace waddles and do you know that wallace waddles died with no money and he was an alcoholic and I'm going, so now get to your point. Mm -hmm. And they go, well, why would you, why would you promote somebody's book like that? That that's the way they died. I'm like, really? <laughs> it's like, it's like, you know, man, I mean, if, if you wanted to get, and, and what I said to him and it shocked him. And I said, so. So when people say that Jesus was just a carpenter's son, I guess we should no longer read the Bible then. I mean, when you really look at it from a point of view, 
Jesus was a rebel. Uh, he never listened to authority. He broke all of their laws. And he was telling everybody that they didn't need the government. Yeah, they were pissed at him. <laughs> and they killed him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's like, so why are you following anything that Christians believe in if the guy that was really leading the story was really honestly sort of a a, a rebel and, and a guy that didn't listen to law and he was constantly getting his butt chewed because don't you know we don't do that on Sunday? Don't you know we don't do that? Don't you know we don't do that? I mean, he virtually found every law that that, that, that that was happening at that time and he purposely broke them all. How would that person fit in a church today? Right. <laughs> right. Think about that. Yeah. If, 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 if across the street from the church parking lot, he's having a concert. Right. And he's telling yeah. everybody, don't go in there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. Yeah. <laughs> no, what? No, what? That, yeah. yeah, that's just being, gosh, there are so many things that we just are not aware oh. of, you know? So one more, what is that's next so for Robert Hollis? What's next for you? What is your vision from here on to say the next three to five years for you? Tell me your vision. The more I'm just open to what comes to me, I, I, I see my life on a year to year basis and still a majority of the stuff that I'm doing is stuff that I didn't envision. So, so when I put the grandiose out there that I would like to help a million more people, and I'd like to help 250,000 orphans. I, I keep the big dreams out there. I know how they make me feel while I'm accomplishing them. And then I just really allow whatever God, the universe, whatever you want to believe, to throw things in my path, mm -hmm. you know, because I used to, I used to, I used to plan too restrictive. Nowadays, I tell people is that if you said, well, I need to do this at this time and this time and this time and this time and this time, and you see me do that with Corky, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Be, yeah, it, it was yeah. like Corky was trying to do too many things instead of focusing on what God had already called him to do. So if he puts more energy into what gives him the most joy and the most impact, then it exploded for him. Oh, my gosh. He is amazing. Right. So, 1.2 million followers on TikTok. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And he's and part so, of our inner circle. <laughs> we get him. Yeah. So, so that's <laughs> my that's amazing yeah. people. I don't know how many summers I have left on this planet. And, and Matthew, you know, my son, Matthew, it's mm -hmm. like, uh, he, he is so optimistic of the future of what's going to happen with AI that he goes, dad, I just, I think that you're living in a time where, you know, as long as you want to keep giving and helping people, you can be here forever. You right. know, because he, he's like, you know, now they're doing all this thing where they're digitizing people and doing all this stuff. And I'm going like, you know, how long do you keep your consciousness alive? So right. I just think that I don't know how many summers I have left. I just know that I love life and I love people and I love seeing uh people become the person they love because always wanted to become because right. that that does nothing but just opens up doors to okay well what else could I do or what else could I do and that's why people don't understand people that love life because they said they always say Robert if I made your kind of money I would retire and then I would just live life on my terms that is freaking boring right and and i think and if you a can do it for a while it. and i i know right. people, exactly. yeah I, yeah i it's like you 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 your money's taken care of everything's taken care of and then you buy nice things and then you travel all over the world and maybe for some people they would never travel but all mm -hmm. of a sudden it does become a point where i, I i'll I'll, set, I'll share this last commercial with you there i mean this thought I watched a commercial and there's a Yellowstone Boys and Girls Ranch that that a lot of, uh, you know, I, I've seen it, never felt the need to go and connect with it. But they're mm -hmm. constantly doing commercials about there's some law in the in the state of Montana where like 44 percent of everything that you have 
can be given not only to the state, but giving to a nonprofit in that state, and they can pay you a return on your investment. Oh, you're kidding. So to think that these rich ranchers that have lived around here forever and then Billings is getting big. And so all of a sudden this guy's got a hundred acres and now they're selling it for a hundred thousand dollars an acre. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Right? I know a <laughs> lot of families like that. So now they got, now they got 20, $30 million and they can take that 20, $30 million, give it to the Yellowstone boys and girls ranch and get mm -hmm. a 10% return on their money every month oh. oh my goodness and it's like tax-free so you just take all your money and give it to the state i mean this organization mm -hmm. and then they turn around and pay you what you know maybe fifty thousand dollars a month for the rest of your life oh my goodness that would be so sad <laughs> <laughs> and, and so now you don't have to worry about what you're going to do and then you did something good but you still haven't destroyed you know, you, you just having a piece of money sitting in the bank doing nothing is sort of silly. Right, exactly. Uh, yeah, Matt. Um, okay, I'm not going to keep you anymore. I know. Okay. It's four uh, Robert, thank you so, so much for being here. You you just swell my heart. You are number one with in my book. You always will be. And I love you to pieces. I, lo I, I love you too. And what a great interview, Lisa Marie. I think did. this was the fun. Um, I felt very comfortable with you. Thank you, you so did much. Amazing. For that. I'm I'm so so proud of you. Awesome. Thank you, Robert. And now yeah. you get to read now you get to reach out to the rest of the world and go, yeah. wait, can I do an interview with you? And they go, Well, you will, you know, I'll send you a video that I did with Robert Hollis. And they'll go, yeah, yeah you can interview me. Okay. <laughs> I've already been turned down a couple of times, but that's okay. Uh, that's yeah. okay. I'll get the ones. <laughs> I'll yeah. get the ones that were meant to be here with me. Right? Absolutely. Yes. Love All right. You. Love you. He says, You're pretty Thank you everybody from else for watching. Appreciate you guys so, so much. I apologize for no comments, but I, I wanted to concentrate on Robert. So, all right. Thank you, Robert. Love you. Love you. All right. We're out of here. Bye-bye.